All right, we just submitted our creature designs for assignment two. And as we're thinking about our proving ground, which is putting our creature into an environment in a believable way, it helps to start thinking about our creature and forcing ourselves to think and question assumptions. And giving something a name can often jumpstart that. So I asked you to present your creature and give it a name. So I have to do that for mine. I'm going to call mine a, a cavern mud skipper. And what that does is it immediately makes me think about how it interacts with its surroundings, right? So what can I do? Well, if I submitted this correctly as a finished assignment two, I should be able to just drag and drop that file onto the desktop and get a clean PNG of it. And just to remind you, the differences between a PNG file, these are both online file types, they do not support multiple layers, and the other type of online file type that we've made is a JPEG. So if I save this as a JPEG to the desktop and I open that up, one's a JPEG, one's a PNG. A JPEG cannot support transparency, so it will always fill in the rectangle with white if there's any open gaps. Right? Whereas a PNG will take on the background color of whatever it's placed upon, including our landscape setting. So PNG is great for text assets, for logo assets when used in an online architecture. We need the clean PNG. And then the other thing we need for our proving ground, we'll open it up in photo P is our first assignment. So I've already started this, and I started a proving ground. And all I do is open up my assignment one, and then what I do is I drag and drop my PNG onto the PSD file that has the multiple layers. If I do it with the JPEG, that doesn't work because the JPEG has that white background. And as I sync that through the layers, you can see how the texture overlays affect it until it just disappears. But much, much more effective, much, much more useful if I can use the PNG asset. But there is a cost. So the PNG is transparent. and therefore has clean edges. But if I look at the amount of memory that these take, the PNG is 16.6 .6 megabytes. And the JPEG, these are the exact same resolution and the same size, but the memory it takes, the actual data it requires, is very different. The JPEG at the same resolution only takes two megabytes. JPEGs are able to reduce their memory usage through the first thing that this proving ground is getting us to recognize, and that's called pattern recognition. So JPEGs work by recognizing similar pixel patterns and then just reducing those all to one line of code. Whereas PNGs will remember each pixel in its place, but can code for empty space and for lower opacity. So if you'll notice, sometimes you'll see it, that the colors are just a little bit more vibrant and the contrast a little bit more sharp in a PNG than in a JPEG. And that's because a JPEG, let's like look at the similar pixels. Yeah, so you can see... I can see it more on my screen than on the projector, but the contrast in the wing here has a lot more variety than the contrast in the wing here. And that's just because from the same pixels in Photopea, JPEG is writing a, a pattern recognition algorithm that kind of merges all of these together. And the more memory you want to save, 
the more the JPEG will keep reducing those pixels to be more and more similar. So it's a lot like mathematics and taking a complicated long number and then rounding it down, rounding it down, rounding it down. This is what we call loss compression. And for anything to go online, it has to be a loss compression format, which means that it, it is not very big. It is not very data hungry. It will load quickly. But it means if you open it, change it, and save it again, all in that same digital format, it will keep losing data every time. Which is why we save it not just as a JPEG or just as a PNG. We also save it as a PSD, not an online format, a working format, because the PSD will always have all the data in it. But the PSD is a lot bigger than either of these, and you can't have it show up online. You can only attach it. So that's why I recommend making a clean PNG to bring in. Even beyond not having the white background, it has better variation in the pixels. Okay, the next step is making the angle of the anatomy match. So I've brought this in as a smart object. I can just leave it as a smart object. And I can use good old option command T in photo P to free transform it. And I can rotate it. I can flip it. The name of this is a cavern mud skipper, right? So it's going to have something to do with this mud that's in the cavern. And that kind of suggests its size to me. I think I want it to be amongst kind of goofy and amongst these little stalagmites in this this shallow pool and it's going to be kind of hopping out skipping out of the water onto the land so part of it's going to be underwater but it has these big webbed feet maybe it can even kind of run along the water a little bit so when i'm keeping these things in mind I want to think of how I can angle the anatomy to best showcase this creature in this environment. And it would be good if its wing overlapped with the dark cave wall a little bit to show it. And it would be good if the angle of its anatomy was maybe a little different. So I'm going to use Option Command T and I'm going to right click and use Distort just like I did when I was building the creature because this can help just tweak the kind of angle on the creature, right? All is one. So that it kind of fits within this landscape a little bit better. So I think actually this would be a good placement. I'm going to have part of it underwater. And I'm also going to now sink it down in my layers. I'm going to use command left bracket to move my selected layer down through my atmosphere and down behind the foreground rocks, right? Maybe even down under the water at some point. Okay, now the requirement of this project is that we show off our creature, not on our full landscape, but that we show off our creature in an environment where the creature takes up at least 25% of the image. Right now, this guy takes up maybe 15% of the overall image. Would you guys agree? Not quite 20, 20%, 25%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my guides and I'm going to make a new composition. One that really showcases the creature more. And we're going to save this as a different file type. So if I crop it down to this, using the crop tool in my guides, come on, <laughs> come on, photo Pete. that will make it so my creature is at least 25% or 20, 25% of the composition. I can also, with the crop tool, you get what are called the rule of thirds lines. These are just good composition lines. It's good to have focal points. Yikes, I'm glitching. 
it's good to have focal points that line up with those rule of thirds lines. So I'm just going to save this quick. Remember, you want to save it as a PSD and you want to rename it Proving Ground 1. This is no longer Assignment 1. You don't want to accidentally overwrite your first assignment. Okay. So that's how I've saved it. I want to know where it's saving to. So when I say Command S, not only is it named correctly, but I can see it change and I can see the update to it. So I changed my composition to feature my character. So that's step one, to make the angle of the anatomy match the environment. I can turn off my guides with command semicolon. The next stage is to make the lighting work for my creature. And this is a good opportunity to remember about texture fills. Texture fills are the things that are existing on top of my creature right now. And it's good to see what's happening. Here's the mating dance that happens. Ooh. So in order to understand my assets, what I'm going to do is I am going to, to go behind my creature layer. I'll make my creature layer green so it's easy to see. Still a smart object. Anything behind that creature I am going to merge together. So I'm going to hold down shift, select all these layers. And then I'm going to say layer, merge layers. I'm not going to hold down option because I want to flatten them all into one layer. And command E is the shortcut for that. My photo P is being slow, but it should do it. All of this is helping to reduce memory as well. All right. Because remember, these PSD documents, they're full. So I have a background plate now. So that's everything that's behind your creature. Think of it as a stage set. And this is the backdrop behind your actor. Then we have my actor. And then we have all the stuff that's in front of my actor on the stage. All these foreground elements. Including the fog machine. And all of those help impact how that creature interacts with the environment. But maybe I want to play with it a little bit differently. So I'm going to remind you, I actually don't know if I need, yeah, it works. I'll leave it. I could just decide to take some elements off, right? But if I have those rocks hidden, then it doesn't look like he's, it he looks like he's standing on the water instead of, I want to make him look like he's underneath it. So I think those rocks are helpful. Okay, next I'm going to remind you how you make texture fills and what texture fills are. So I like to find them in Pixabay, but the official name for these things are texture overlays. So if you buy them from a vendor, you just search for texture overlays and you'll find lots of them on stock sites, and on, on pay for sites. So I can do an image search for texture overlays and you'll see there's all kinds of them. A lot of them are for making things grungier or making things look like they're good for newsletters, old paper textures. When you want dimensional effects for environments, it's good to create or look for cloud or mist texture overlays. Right, and then you'll get these. And you'll see the professional ones, they're always designed in grayscale. And they may be high resolution, they may be low resolution. As long as they don't have watermarks, it doesn't really matter. Because texture overlays for atmosphere, which is what we're doing, can be really, really soft. And when we have to grow these to make these a lot bigger, they're just get softer and softer. So if I drag this on, and then stretch it to fill my frame, right? And I can hold down shift and I can stretch it lots of different ways. So I'll stretch it that way. This would be like the steam coming from this cavern. And then what I'll do is I'll change it. Notice it's in grayscale. It's a smart object still. 
I'm going to change its blending mode. So there 